Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Caitlin. Welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a scary stories reading, I guess. I'm going to be reading a couple scary stories to you guys. I have a little bit of a different setup. I'm sitting in front of my fireplace with my trick or treat sign and my Halloween decor that I got from, I believe it was, where was it from? From Marshalls! Look at how cute this is, you guys. But I got this cozy little setup, and I also got my dog's Halloween blanket. And I have a shirt that says, I can't bring my dog, I'm not going. How true is that, right? So anyway, I'm going to be reading some short, scary stories to you guys. Something a little bit different than what I've done on this channel so far. I guess, without further ado... We'll just go ahead and get into the stories. I'm not the best reader either, so bear with me. I'm sorry. Okay. So, and also the stories that I read will be linked down in the description below as well if you want to go check more out or those specific stories. First story I'm going to read is called Seeing Red, the first day of school by Zen Raiho. If I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Everyone loves the first day of school, right? New year, new classes, new friends. It's a day full of potential and hope before all the dreary depressions of reality show up to ruin all the fun. I like the first day of school for a different reason though. You see, I have a sort of power. When I look at people, I can sense a sort of aura around them. A colored outline based on how long that person has to live. Most everyone I meet around my age is surrounded by a solid green hue, which means they have plenty of time left. A fair amount of them have a yellow orangish tinge to their auras which tends to mean a car crash or some other tragedy. Anything that takes people before their time, as they say. The real fun is when the auras venture into the red end of the spectrum though. Every now and then, I'll see someone who's basically a walking spotlight. Those are the ones who get murdered or kill themselves. It's such a rush to see them and know their time is numbered. With that in mind, I always get to class very early so I could scout out my classmates' fates. The first kid who walked in was basically radiating red. I chuckled to myself. Too damn bad, bro. People kept walking in. They all had the same intense glow. I finally caught a glimpse of my rose-tinted reflection in the window, but I was too stunned to move. Our professor stepped in and locked the door, his aura a sickening shade of green. Okay. The next story I'll be reading is They Got the Definition Wrong by Louie if that's right. It has been said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I understand the sentiments behind the saying, but it's wrong. I entered the building on a bet. I was strapped for cash and didn't buy into the old legends of the hotel to begin with, so 50 bucks was more than enough to get me to do it. It was simple. Just reached the top floor, the 45th floor, shone my flashlight through the window. The hotel was old and broken, including the elevator, so that meant hiking up the stairs. Up the stairs I went. As I reached each platform, I noted the old brass plaques displaying the floor numbers. 15, 16, 17, 18. I felt a little tired as I crept higher, but so far, no ghosts, no cannibals, no demons. Piece of cake. I can't tell you how happy I was when I entered the last stretch of numbers. I joyfully counted them aloud at each platform. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 44. I stopped and looked back down the stairs. I must have miscounted. So I continued up, 44. One more flight, 44. And then down 10 flights, 44. 15 flights, 44. And so it's been for as long as I can remember. So really, insanity isn't doing something repeatedly and expecting different results. It's knowing that the results will never ever change. That each door leads to the same staircase, to the same number. It's realizing you no longer fall asleep. It's not knowing whether you've been running for days or weeks or years. It's when the sobbing slowly turns into laughter. So the next set of stories I'll be reading is from a website called The Lineup. It says eight short creepypasta stories that will give you chills. I'm not gonna read all of them, so let's just see. One's called Roommate Troubles. This actually happened to me a few years back at the University of Arts in Philadelphia. My sophomore year, I roomed with a girl named Kara. She was a jazz vocalist, but her main interest was opera. 
We had a small room on the sixth floor of a dormitory called Jupiter Hall. The walls were thin and her late night singing and voice practices would keep me up late. After a month or so of lost sleep, I convinced her to move her late night practices to the music studios in the Miriam Theater building a block away. Around 8 one evening, Kara announced that she would be practicing late for an upcoming recital and probably wouldn't be home until around midnight. Great, I thought. That means I can go to bed early. I was beat. I had a horrible day in acting studio and was ready to pass out as soon as I had dinner. She said goodnight and left, coffee and sheet music in hand. I made some grilled cheese and soup, gobbled it down, and immediately began to prepare for bed. By the time I got out of the shower, my eyelids were so heavy I could hardly brush my teeth. I pulled on my PJs and crawled into the top bunk of our bed. I was out as soon as my head hit the pillow. I should take a second to describe the layout of our apartment. When entering the apartment, the bedroom was through a door immediately to the left. Our bathroom was inside the bedroom, just past the bunk beds. You are as nice in the sense that you don't have to share bathrooms. Anyway, I woke up to the sound of the apartment door closing. I opened my eyes and groggily checked my phone. Midnight on the dot. I rolled back over and closed my eyes. I heard Kara enter the room and stop in front of my bunk bed, checking to see if I'm actually asleep, I thought. She flopped down on the bed below me, which was strange, as she was a stickler for brushing her teeth and washing it before bed. Then again, exams were just around the corner and we were all exhausted. The mattress below me creaked and then was silent. I couldn't even hear her breathing. I started to drift off again. I was on the edge of a deep sleep when I was startled awake by a noise. A key in the lock, the door opening and Kara entering our apartment, humming an opera tune. That's creepy. The last one I'll read on this website is called I Sat on the Bus. I sat on the bus on my way to school, listening to music and paying little to no attention to the other students. At one of the stops, my mind snapped back into reality. I looked towards a small house, Tommy's house I thought. A hand slipped through the drapes of the window and waved the bus driver to move on. He's sick I thought, paying no large amount of attention to the situation. The day flew by. I watched the local news channel after school and what I heard paralyzed me. Tommy's entire family was murdered that day by an unknown suspect. After hearing this news, I moved back up to my room and quietly fell asleep. The next day I sat on the bus. We drove past Tommy's house and the bus driver, unaware of Tommy's family's fate, stopped at his house. As I was about to get up and explain to her what had happened, something caught my eye. A pale hand slipped through the drapes of the window and waved the bus driver to move on. I sat on the bus, terrified. Oh my goodness. Here's one, also on Reddit, called Knock Knock Nikki. Even though my violent, unpredictable ex-husband had been dead for more than a year, I hadn't lost my instinctive fear of him. When my phone rang from a blocked number, I still expected to hear his voice alternatively, cajoling then threatening me. So when I was awakened by a quiet but repetitive knocking at my front door, my adrenaline instantly went to 11. I sat up in my bed in the darkness, the cover swaddled around me, and my heart in my throat. Had I double checked the deadbolt before going to bed? I wasn't sure. Meanwhile, the knocking had gradually grown louder and more frantic. To make matters worse, I couldn't find my phone in the dark. The spot on my night table where I usually put it was empty. I had no choice. Leaving the lights off, I slowly fumbled my way to the kitchen, trying to move as quietly as possible and incurring several bruises along the way. At the counter, I carefully reached for my meat cleaver, hoisting its familiar weight. It made me feel better, although I had no idea whether I was capable of using it as a weapon. I moved to the front door, and as I reached it, the knocking suddenly stopped. It was a standoff. I didn't dare either open the door or politely go back to bed. As a rancid gust of air brushed across the back of my neck, smelling of rot and dirt, I belatedly realized that the inside of a door could be knocked on too. Okay, this one's called My Brother's Birthday. He just turned 18 today. He really earned it though. We've been through many things together and there's also a lot of stuff he didn't know. Unlike others, our relationship as brothers is something far beyond explanation. I think it's the way our souls are connected by some kind of bond, which gets stronger and stronger as we both grow up. Recently. I'm sure he starts to notice the changes when I tried to pull some little pranks on him. It was his voice when he told our mom about the shadow he often saw from the corner of his eyes. It was his expression when he found that his books weren't in the same place as he kept them. And it was his friends that always complained about the unnerving atmosphere every time they walked into his room. 
From the other side, I continue to grow and become more powerful. That also means one day, he'll be aware of my presence and we can finally be more like ordinary siblings out there. But today, I would like to take a small bite of his birthday cake leftovers and wait for tomorrow when he'll try to convince mom that he didn't do it. Or I can just let go. I don't know. Perhaps deep down, I still want my brother to be happy, to be grateful for the life he deserves. I might only want him to know how much today's date means to him. What can I say? It used to be the same day as those nurses delivered the worst news to our mom. The day she realized she would only raise one of us and that she had to bury one. It was my birthday as well. This one's called The Woman at the Side of the Road. Why she's chosen a great time for hitchhiking, Dad said. I opened my eyes and looked outside. We were driving over 60 miles per hour so we wouldn't get a good look at her. The strange woman with red, wind-blown hair. She was standing by the road at dawn and waving her hand. We passed right by her, and only after a while we realized something was wrong. I think there was blood on her, and her clothes were torn and dirty, I said. She was waving in a desperate way, too. That's what I'm thinking about. We need to go back, Dad said. I was about to make a U-turn when something further down the road caught his attention. It was an accident. A white Audi smashed into a leafless willow in a trench under the blanching sky. The grass was sparkling with dew and broken glass. The air was still hot and moved above the wreckage. Stay in the car, Dad said. He ran to the Audi. I moved to the window to see everything. Dad kept yanking at the Audi door. It finally let go. He crept inside and emerged with a small girl. She had long, red hair. Blood tarnished her white arms. I watched as he laid her on the grass and gave her a heart massage. We got out of our Ford. Stay by the car, Timic. Please. The girl started to cry. Dad put her in a safe position and returned to the Audi. I saw him pecking the Audi's driver, who sat motionless in the driver's seat. Dad got out and reached for his mobile. I think we were close to the hospital because it wasn't five minutes before we heard an ambulance siren. When the paramedics and police arrived, we got back into our car. Dad started the car, and then I remembered the hitchhiker. Dad, but there was this strange woman by the road, waving at us, remember? Maybe she's been in the accident, too. Maybe she's ran so far from here looking for help. She did, but we don't have to go back. The men from the ambulance will take care of her? Dad sighed. Finally, he looked at me. The woman we've seen waving at us is in the car, in the Audi. She's sitting at the steering wheel, and she's dead. It's called Painted Walls. Today, the wall is painted white. It matches my door. I check every day, so I'm very proud of my work. Today the wall is painted gray. It matches my window. The rain gently caressing the window complements the wall's soft colors. Today the wall is painted blue. It matches my mind. It matches the sky. The sky is busy. It is full. The rain is heavier today. When will the wall be white? Today the wall is painted purple. It matches my soul. It glooms over me. It reminds me of when I was younger. When will the wall go back? Today the wall is painted black. It matches my heart. I don't want it to leave. I hope the wall never changes. When did I get here? Today the wall is painted red. It oozes down a collection of intestines, guts, a mix of blood. I'm so very proud of my work. Okay, this is the last and final story, you guys, and I'm done. <laughs> this one seems creepy just kind of reading through it. This one is also on Reddit as well, as were the last couple, and it's called The Story Will Not Scare You. This story will not scare you. You can search for meaning all you want. Try to translate. Read the same sentence over and over. Read the same sentence over and over. However, no matter what you do, I'm sure you will not be frightened by this story. You do not frighten easily, I'm sure. You are, after all, on this subreddit looking for a scare. Why'd you click on this story? Only to prove me right? Human lives are short, maybe even shorter than you think. Why are you reading this? There are so much scary things you could be reading. Tales of ghosts, ghouls, murderers, and kidnappers. Go read about those, or perhaps even experience them in real life. I promise you, no matter how long you read for, the story will not scare you. It is only a distraction from the thing that is right behind you. So, I will call that the end of the video. That was actually kind of fun reading those creepy stories and I think, I don't know, I enjoyed it. I think I want to kind of incorporate that more into my channel. But obviously for the month of Halloween, I'm going to be reading 
scary stories throughout this month on my channel but if this is something you guys enjoy and want me to continue to do after halloween just let me know um if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up that would help me out so much and subscribe you guys i'd love to have you i'd love to have you a part of my channel of my journey on youtube i'm gonna leave it at that and i'll see you guys in my next video bye